First story is titled, Am I the a-hole for refusing to pay for my stepdaughter's wedding? I've been in my stepdaughter's life since she was 11. She was dealing with so much and was understandably mad at everyone, including me. She was dealing with chronic condition, her parents' separation, and leaving her family and friends after her mom moved to my hometown. My stepdaughter ended up with last-stage kidney failure. She was on dialysis for over nine months. I stayed home with her, and I spent a lot of time with doctors trying to learn about different machines. She had many blood transfusions and was admitted to the hospital several times. Her mom wasn't there much because she had to work, so I was the one who stayed home and took care of her. It got too much for us, we decided that I'd be getting tests done to see if I could be a potential donor. And I was a match. I donated one of my kidneys in 2017 and thankfully, there were no problems after the surgery. Her recovery was complete a few months after because she had other issues. Her now fiancé proposed to her after she was discharged from the hospital and they're getting married in February. She's 23 now, studies in an online college and doing okay. Her mom and I don't share finances. My work nature is different and I don't get money on a monthly salary. I own a truck that I used to make a living, but I'm capable of providing for the family. My stepdaughter stopped visiting. She used to call a lot, call me dad and check on me a lot, but I heard that she's spending time with her bio dad and visiting him and his new wife, which is not a bad thing. But one time when she visited, she and her mom asked if I could help pay for her wedding, and I agreed. But my stepdaughter seemed distanced and no longer had heart-to-heart -heart conversations with me. She talked to her mom and her mom would talk to me. Turned out, she accepted her bio dad back in her life and said that no matter what happened, he's her dad. I respected her decision, but last night I argued with my wife after my stepdaughter told her to ask me not to come to her wedding because her bio dad will be there. I was confused. I asked why and she said that her bio dad didn't want me there and she wanted him there. I felt awful. My wife told me to be more understanding, but I told her I won't be paying if I'm not allowed to come and should ask her real dad to pay. My wife acted shocked and said that this might ruin my relationship with her daughter, but her bio dad's opinion is more important clearly. I refused to pay and told her I won't discuss it. My wife said my stepdaughter will be disappointed and I shouldn't punish her because of her bio dad, but I'm not. I couldn't take this treatment and be put last. From what I understand, her bio dad is actually contributing money to the wedding. My wife says that no matter what decision my stepdaughter makes, I needed to respect it. And that's what I'm doing. I'm not saying her bio dad shouldn't be there, but they need to understand that I won't be paying towards the wedding if I'm not welcome there. Her bio dad clearly doesn't want me there, and my stepdaughter is listening to him for some reason. He and I never been on good terms. He's always been neglectful, especially during his daughter's illness. But he claimed that I'm the neglectful one and my stepdaughter shouldn't be living with me. Now for the top comments. Not a day hole. Wow, your stepdaughter is an ungrateful piece of work. You literally took the words out of my mouth. Not a day hole. Your stepdaughter is destroying your relationship, not you. Point this out to your wife. Tell her she's free to make these decisions. But you've sacrificed enough to be in her life, and if she's this selfish, she's the one that will have to show she wants a relationship at this point. Opie has also sacrificed for her life. He has spent so much time caring and supporting her, even donating one of his kidneys. He had been there unconditionally. My wife said my stepdaughter will be disappointed and I shouldn't punish her because of her bio dad, but I'm not. Correct. Opie, you are not a hole. You should not give any money to the wedding when you are not being invited. Really sound like a good person. Sorry about all of this. Reddit here supports you. Not a day hole at all. First off, I sympathize with you. You've given part of yourself both physically and mentally to her. You should absolutely be treated with more respect and human decency. Lastly, I agree with you completely. There's no way I'd pay or help pay for the wedding. I really don't see how your wife is in your corner on this. You're not good enough to attend, but your money is still fine? No way. You deserve better than that. I understand that part of her behavior is influenced by her bio dad. I'm not gonna lie, he is a bitter person and a grudge holder. He didn't want me there and is hiding behind her to get everyone to agree with her. I had a whole other answer until I reached the part about her asking you not to attend. 
Not a day whole. I was a daddy's girl. My parents divorced when I was young and she remarried. I gave my poor stepfather hell for a few years because I was so close to my dad and felt like I was betraying him. As I grew up, my stepdad never gave up. He allowed me the time to grow and realize it was possible to love two father figures. When it came time for me to marry, I knew I wanted both my dads to escort me down the aisle. My dad was less than thrilled, but because he loved me more than he disliked my stepdad, he did it. Never did it cross my mind to exclude my stepfather. I'm so sorry your stepdaughter doesn't feel the same. Now for the next story. Am I the a-hole for not wanting my stepdad to be father of the bride at my wedding? I, 27 female, am getting married in May 2022. This has come up a few times and I'm starting to feel a little bad, so I wanted to see if others think I'm the a-hole or not. My dad died when I was 10. My mom met my stepdad when I was 12 and married him when I was 13. Full disclosure, I didn't exactly want her to get married, but I understood and respected and supported her right to be happy again. It was hard for me. And while I was always polite and civil to him, I never wanted to bother develop a deeper relationship with him. For me, I felt that as long as I treat him with respect, that was all I needed to do. It upset them both a lot, but they accepted it because nobody could deny I was civil. It has only become a problem now that I'm getting married and didn't give him the father of the bride role at my wedding. They first asked about it when I mentioned needing them to pick a song to walk to their seats to at the ceremony. My stepdad asked what about me. I told him I would be walking with my fiancé. He said he was expecting to do it, and I told him it was okay. Then they asked about the father slash daughter dance, and I told them there was only going to be the first dance between me and my husband, but we could dance after. I then asked if they wanted to do a joint speech, separate speeches or something else. He said he wanted to be a more traditional father of the bride. I told him I understood he wanted that, but that wasn't going to be a role at my wedding. He asked why. I said my fiancé and I decided not to do it. Afterward, my mom told me that I might not love him or consider him a part of my family, but he is still a person with feelings and I should let him do this stuff for him. She told me it was never too late to embrace having another father in my life. I told her I did not want another father in my life, that I was happy with my life, but if it would make him happy, we could work out a dance at the wedding. She said it sounded like I didn't want it, and I said I was willing to do it to spare feelings, but I had already chosen not to do a specific spotlight dance with him. She told me they would be willing to pay for the wedding if that was the issue, and I said money wasn't the issue and we were fine paying for it. Apparently, my lack of enthusiasm means they rejected it, and yet they're still asking for him to have the role. I don't want him to have it. This isn't anything against him. It's a me thing. It was always a me thing, and I'm fine with that. I worked in therapy on this for several years to realize my boundaries and feelings are okay, and I have a healthy understanding of how I feel slash where my mind is at. And now I'm wondering if I'm an a-hole or not. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. You set your boundaries and they need to respect them. Stay firm. Indeed. And a fair reminder to them both that this is her day, not theirs. They need to remember that. Not day hole. It's your wedding, so you do as you please. It's nice that your stepdad would offer to do such things, but you set the limit and were even willing to compromise during the wedding reception. Your mother needs to remember and recognize that it's your day and should not press the issue any further. Exactly that. Unless, of course, her stepfather gave her a kidney, then she'd be an absolutely awful person. Not day hole, except your mom. From your story, it seems like your stepdad asked fairly politely and didn't flip out at you when you said no and respected your wishes. You're allowed to say no, and your stepdad is allowed to be temporarily sad. Your mom became the a-hole when she tried to emotionally manipulate you into feeling guilty about not loving your stepdad when it has nothing to do with it at all. The next story is titled, Am I the a-hole for telling off my friends for missing their engagement photo shoot over their roommate? So, I do photography as a side hubby for extra cash. Portrait shots, engagement sessions, weddings, etc. It's fun, and I like what I do. Two of my good friends got engaged last year and were wanting to do an engagement session, and I suggested when it snows, we should take advantage of that. 
They loved the idea, and I even went shopping with the soon-to-be bride to pick out an outfit to go well with the snowy background. We finally find out it was going to snow last night and this morning several days ago. Bride is my neighbor. Groom is not. Groom lives 15 minutes on really bad back roads that eyes over and are definitely not safe to drive in after snow. So I suggested he spend the night before. I don't want anyone getting hurt over photos. Groom and Bride have slept together plenty of times, in both meanings of the word sleeping, so this isn't a problem of morality. Groom's roommate, though, is obsessed with their sex lives and purity. One time, he tore their living room apart in anger, all because the groom spent the night at Bride's apartment. Groom has to sneak Bride in after his roommate goes to bed, and like out at 5am before he wakes up to prevent angering him. His roommate has all kinds of issues concerning his faith. Andy pushes his issues onto the groom and will make life hell if groom doesn't follow roommate's morality code. I'm a Christian myself, but this guy's a lunatic. Over the past six months, our other friends and my boyfriend have suggested moving out or even crashing with them because everyone thinks groom's roommate is crazy and creepily controlling. But groom feels obligated to stay since roommate has no other real friends. Anyway, so groom was going to spend the night with bride. That was already discussed so that we can walk to each other in the snow and no one has to drive. I had everything set up and ready to go. I get a text this morning saying Groom did not spend the night because he feared angering his roommate, and so we can't do the engagement photos because, as I predicted, the roads are iced over. I'm mad and basically told them off that they need to stop letting roommate control their lives, and that it's unhealthy as hell, and it isn't fair to me to go through lengths to plan a photo shoot and prepare equipment all to cancel two hours before by saying groom didn't spend a night as planned. I told them they better suggest something else, because there's no way we'll ever do a snow shoot for them if they keep living in fear of roommate. They're upset, and think I'm harsh. I think they need to get out of this toxic roommate situation, and should have told me in advance that Groom was never planning to stay the night because I knew if he didn't, I'd have known not to prepare since I know how bad the roads get. Am I the a-hole? Now for the comments. Prepare yourself for a blizzard of not the a-hole. The Groom legitimately needs an intervention to get him out of that arrangement and away from that roommate. You are all being way too polite about this. It goes beyond controlling. It's frankly scary. There is no reason under the sun, or storm clouds, that you should not have received a text in the evening saying the groom will not be staying at your neighbor's, and to prepare yourself for snow cancellation in the morning. Edit. I scratched out my first sentence because, to my great surprise, this is going to be more contentious than I imagined. To me, you are clearly not the whole. It would have been common courtesy for them to give you a heads up that plans had changed. If the boyfriend wasn't in touch with you, certainly the bride, your next-door neighbor, could have been. This whole thing is weird and gives credence to the often-used cliché of no good deed. Yeah, if they even told me last night, I wouldn't be as upset. But like the morning off? They both knew he wouldn't be spending the night by last night, so they could have said something. My guess is maybe he thought he'd tried to drive? Not they haul, and I would not do the shoots for them anymore. Did you set a price or was it for free? Such a late cancellation means they still need to pay up a portion of the price because you have spent time preparing and could not get another booking. I was going to do it for free as a gift to them. No charge. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my sister she was dating my bio father? So, my life turned into a bloody soap opera recently and I could use some outside opinions here. I, 24 female, am the product of my mom having an affair. Fortunately, my dad decided to forgive my mom and keep me, and I had a pretty good upbringing. But I don't really look a lot like the rest of my family. I'm the only redhead, among other things. And I did ask questions of a, why am I the only one with, insert trait here, nature growing up. When I was 17, my mom took me out for ice cream and introduced me to my bio father. She said that she felt I was old enough to know the truth and explained about her affair, while also, A, making me promise I wouldn't tell my older sister, 27 female in the present, and B, hammering home along with my bio father that he'd never be part of my life and didn't want me. It was a lot, I won't lie, but I learned to suck it up and move on with my life. Fast forward to the present. My big sister has always gravitated towards older men. We like to joke that it's the result of two men George Clooney movies growing up. And two months ago, shared a picture of herself and her new boyfriend. 
who, to my shock, turned out to be my bio father. I debated what to do for a couple of days, then ultimately decided she needed the truth and told her. My sister did not take it well and dumped him, but she wasn't angry with me. Honestly, by now, she's kind of amused, says that since she banged my dad, she's my mom and has extra power to boss me around now. My mom, on the other hand, is furious. She says I divulged something that wasn't my secret to share and that I had no business telling anyone. That since my father isn't related to my sister, it didn't matter if he dated my sister, and it wasn't like they were talking marriage anyway. It's been two months and she's still angry, still snide, calls me traitor and finds excuses to make loud comments about how I can't be trusted with anything private or important, so beware. At the time, I thought I was doing the right thing, but I've never seen my mom this angry before, and she sustained that anger for two solid months. So I'm starting to worry. Did I actually do something really horrible? Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. She needed to know that. That's weird and a little too close to home. Also, it's kind of messed up that your older sister was never told about this key part of her family history. Also, if your bio father knew who she was and her relationship to you, that's really weird and creepy. Thank you. I don't know if he knew. On the one hand, my sister doesn't exactly have a lot of family photos in her apartment. On the other hand, social media's a thing. And my sister's not trying to hide her family, so... Shrugs. Not a hole. Your mom is taking her feelings about herself out on you. Calls me traitor. She's the one who cheated on her family. I can't be trusted with anything private or important. Says the woman who couldn't be trusted to stay faithful to her marriage. It's weird and messed up that your mother wasn't the least bit icked out that her daughter's father was hooking up with her other daughter. Her feelings must be category 4 hurricane right now. Not a day, hole. It's about your life. You can tell anyone you want. I don't know about that. That's a bit much. I wouldn't have told my sister if she wasn't dating him. Of course you can tell anyone that you want. You're an adult. Your mother is ashamed of having to bear any consequences, but that is part of life. Her anger is her problem. That just seems like stirring up things for the sake of stirring up things. I'm very lucky. My parents raised me the same as they did my sister. So for me, there's not much about my life different than if I wasn't a fair baby, outside of a different hair color and apparently needing to worry about my sister dating my father. And that's the end of this video, folks. As always, leave a comment and hit like and subscribe. And if you want more of this content, turn your notification on to get updated on the latest videos. And I'll catch you in the next one. Stay safe.